Hi, welcome to a new episode of Bass Habits. Today we're talking about Jeff Amen, bass player of Pearl Jam. Compared with the other grunge bands of the early 90s, Pearl Jam's style is noticeably less heavy and leans towards the classic rock music of the 1970s. Their sound fuses the stadium rock of the 70s with memorable hooks and choruses, and though as usual it's associated with Gossard and McReady's guitar style and with Eddie Vedder vocals, also their trademark bouncing rhythm section plays a considering part in defining their style. About the bass playing of Jeff Amen, there is nothing ordinary. Expanding upon the role of a traditional rock bass player with his use of unconventional instruments, Amen has set himself apart in terms of playing style and outstanding songwriting contributions. Whereas most bands of the era simply allow the bass to provide a steady support to the song, Pearl Jam are definitely at their best when the playing of Amen is leading the way. The best thing about Amen's unique style is his diversity. He can drive a song like Why Go with a loud and aggressive bass line, and on the next track he will almost disappear, blending with the background like in the atmospheric bass line of all those yesterdays. In order to achieve what he does, he uses a variety of guitars, which include the fretless bass, upright bass and especially a 12-string bass. The 12-string bass provides an important texture to many of Pearl Jam's most iconic songs, like Jeremy, which pretty much every Pearl Jam fan mentions as Jeff's most recognizable bass line. How many other bass lines do you know that use harmonics? The tone he pulls out on this album is fantastic, and on this track especially, it sounds almost like an acoustic guitar. The sound that the bass brings to the table creates a unique texture in between an acoustic and an electric track, providing low frequencies and outlining the melody, at times playing full chords. The music of Jeremy was written by Ament on an acoustic guitar and what got translated on the bass track is pretty much the harmonic skeleton of the song. In fact, even with just bass and vocals, it sounds fantastic. Why Go is another cool example with the bass track sounding heavy as hell. Heard that little upward slide? That's typical of Jeff. Number two, use a fretless bass. Besides his 12 string, Amen almost exclusively plays fretless basses throughout the band's debut, 10 and tracks like Alive or even Flow take full advantage of that. Though it's just doubling the guitar riff, the fretless bass on even flow gives a unique liquid quality to the verse, also due to the trademark rapid upward slide that Jeff is pulling out. Same happens under the solo with little slides from the flat 7th to the root. On black, the bass melts so well with the guitar and the non-perfect pitch gives the bass a lamenting tone that adds a little beautiful scruffiness to the track. Another notable moment is the intro of Ocean, where the fretless bass mimics the vocal line, at times harmonizing with it. While traditionally the fretless bass is associated with jazz, Amen really helped the instrument find its role in rock music, like no one had before. 
This is episode number 49 and it's the first time that I see a rock band with such a consistent use of a fretless. Number 3. Mimic the vocals. As I've just pointed out on the intro of Ocean, the bass follows the vocal line. Another good example is the chorus of Alive, where the bass doubles the fifth jump of the vocal hook line during the chorus, which is also the most recognizable part of the song. Amen's playing is very melodic, following the vocal melody is a very good trick to reinforce it and to make it stand out even more. On top, it's not very used, out of 50 episodes, this is only the third or fourth time I found it used in a consistent way. Try it with your own songs. Number 4, the flat 7th. Many Pearl Jam songs use mixolydian keys and most of the time they use a 7th chord as a tonal center. The bass guitar often enhances its quality by leaning on the flat 7th to create cool grooves, such as in Jeremy or Rats. On No Way, the whole groove of the song relies on that little flat 7th that gives the track a typical scruffy and bluesy feeling. Longitudes, latitudes, it's so absurd. Another typical compositional trait of Pearl Jam is the guitar keeping a pedal tone while the bass moves around, normally using pentatonic scales. As usual, this video is just about the basics. There's a lot of interesting bass lines in the music of Pearl Jam. Give a listen to Hail Hail, In My Tree, or the ending of Present Tense. Tremor Christ has a very interesting bass line. While the whole band hits on the downbeat, the bass plays almost exclusively on the upbeat, giving the song its typical stumbling tempo. Same goes on Among the Waves, the bouncy backbeat of the drums locks in with Ament in a unique way. Play straighter, the feel and the swing will be off. It's probably fair to say that much of Pearl Jam's later albums are not appreciated as much as their early stuff. But there's a lot to be discovered also in recent years. But I had to say that Jeff's contribution in terms of sound is much more evident in the rough productions of the band's first years. His refusal to conform to the norm, not only in his bass playing, but in the type of instruments he uses, took the band to a whole other level compared to their contemporaries such as Nirvana and Soundgarden. I'm gonna end this video with a quote from Emmett himself. I had to be able to feel the bass. You might not necessarily be able to hear it all the time, but if you turn it up, you can feel the movement in the low end. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and follow me on Instagram.